Hi, welcome back to my channel. You're watching Semifo. Hello, liebe Semifo familia. Today, what we're going to talk about is how to succeed as a master student. So I actually made this video under the same title on LSE official YouTube channel, and that pertains to specifically on using LSE's own academic study service center. So for those of you who are interested in checking out more about how to utilize the resources and also the workshops and study tips that you can learn from LSE Life, then make sure you go over it and then check that out. Today, what I'm going to talk about is a general set of tips that I have learned in terms of how to plan your one year master studies program here at LSE and also the important things that you have to keep in mind. So first of all, what I could say is that the one year program goes by incredibly fast. So when I first got to London, the first um, week, I absolutely fell in love with London and that time of the year it has probably the best weather because it's like the first week of September, the sun is out. Of course, when I first got here, the coronavirus was still um, there, but still it was before lockdown started. So things were so, I immediately thought to myself, wow, I wish I could stay here longer than just one year. One year wouldn't be enough. Um, as soon as the first term started, I couldn't really wrap my head around how fast time was going by. And it was almost as if the workload, I mean, okay, so I was very much aware how um, LSE gives a lot of workload. It's notorious for the heavy workload, but I uh, just, I guess I had no idea how much it was going to be. And so, um, I mean, when I was an undergrad, I was already doing double degree program, which was far a lot more demanding just doing one degree program. And it was uh, a five year program. And here it's just one master of science, media and communications. And uh, <laughs> every day I felt like, so I will say this in Korean, 하루하루가 바닷물 위에를 겨우 정말 허덕이면서 as soon as you get one reading done, you may feel like, oh my gosh, now I'm done for the day. But then I, you actually need to get ready for tomorrow. So for an example, this one module that I'm doing right now, Technology and Justice, we usually have a very dense, heavy material to read. And every week we have to read about 150 pages. And it's not just about reading, it's really taking in and understanding the <laughs> underlying concepts and frameworks. And, and the most important thing is that you actually have to make a comparison, um, also be able to assess which arguments of week one, week two, week three, they relate to each other or they, um, or they make counter arguments. You also have to be able to find which arguments are stronger or weaker. Um, so it's a lot of thinking. And as I could share with you, some of the memes that we uh, share in our master student group chats are like this. <laughs> Yeah, so I completely agree. It's it's no joke. Um, it's a lot of hard work, but you know people do it. I do it, so you can do it. <laughs> so it's incredibly important that you establish your disciplines. So here I'm going to talk about setting up disciplines um, according to following four categories: one, academic terms; two, dissertation plan; three, think, experience, and reflect; and lastly, four social. When it comes to term dates, I think it's important that you have a general broad one-year plan in your mind so that you are not so overwhelmed when things start coming. For the year 2020 to 2021, one year is divided into three official terms. First, Michaelmas term, which is like first semester, which starts from which started from September 28th and then December 11th. And right in the middle on the sixth week, it's like the half point of the term. That's um, that's when you get reading week. And and I have shared with you in my vlogs what reading week is like. So I also have put a link right above so you could check that out. And then uh, we got a winter break. 
Lent term starts from January 18th to April 1st. And during the winter break, break that is when you spend you know, winter holidays, Christmas break with your family, but also you have to do a lot of work preparing for your exams and get ready to submit all your essays and also think rigorously about your dissertation. And again, during the Lent term, right in the half point, you get a reading week, which took place February 22nd to February 26th, which is what I'm enjoying right now. Um, I say I'm enjoying even though um, well, okay. So I think it's really important that you you work really hard and you get your stuff done, but at the same time you get to rest in, which I will talk about in the fourth category in the social. And lastly, summer term starts after the Lent term is over, and that's uh, that starts from May 4th to June 18th. And once uh, the summer term ends, that's when you uh, work on your dissertation solely. And so you're going to submit your dissertation by, um, it depends on which program or which department you're in, but usually the second week or third week of August. So this is a general big um, academic year, broad academic year that you can expect during your one year master's studies program. And actually for me, I didn't get to uh, really research so much about how my study is going to unfold because I was still working right before um, I had to leave to London. And so I didn't have enough time to really do much research in terms of Okay, so this is how my master studies uh, program is going to look like. So I learned it in a hard way. So hopefully for those of you who are uh, coming into LSE next academic year will better prepare than I was. And secondly, dissertation plan. So with dissertation, um, it is absolutely natural that you keep changing your dissertation topic or dissertation um, methods or just anything about planning dissertation until the summer term starts. So, um, sorry, I'm just getting a lot of sun today. Let me just put it down a little bit. So you can submit three your three of your top choices um, of your dissertation supervisors at the end of the first term, Michaelmas term, and then you will find out who you're assigned to by the usually by the first week of Lent term or before Lent term, and you will submit your dissertation plan by the second week of Lent term. And then you will get feedback from your supervisor. Um, your supervisor will go over what you have submitted and you will start talking about how you're going to go about it. It's usually the case that you will end up changing your dissertation topic or even methods um, until right until the week that you have to start working on your dissertation. I will talk about dissertation plan, dissertation planning um, once I also get started on this. Right now for me, I'm also still in the process of refining my research question for my dissertation. So I'll keep you guys updated on this. And the third, think, experience, and reflect. Now, I think this is so important. Um, as I had made a video about the London Onji uh, so it's incredibly important that you keep making a record and also reflecting upon what you have done and what you have gone through because sometimes an institution like LSE which is a highly selective institution sometimes the academic environment it, it can be so that we if you start hearing about imposter syndrome by the first week of the school term. I actually have written an article, blog post about this because, um, you know, as someone who was involved in the actual field in the media industry for almost a decade and then coming back to academia and listening to what the, uh, you know, 20 something or, 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 or a little bit, I mean, most of them are younger than I am. So what they were talking about imposter syndrome was uh, was really shocking. It was quite was quite surprising because it's been so long since I heard something like that. And you know what? And now that I'm like halfway through the second term of my master's degree program, I also have to fight with imposter syndrome 
It's no exception for me. It, you are constantly surrounded by that environment, and you know environment does that to you. So it's incredibly important that you uh, keep on reflecting uh, upon your experiences, upon what you have learned, and always going back to your root, where you, your identity is, because it's so easy to be critical of yourself because you get evaluated through what you do. But then, uh, I actually did a QT this morning, and I have to share this with you today. Um, where is it? Okay. Identity and value are found in a vital and living relationship with Christ as Lord. So, oh, okay, here it is. So, we are too prone, too conditioned to listen for all the other voices that uh, that the world says about success or results. So it's hard to listen to your own voices of your soul and also the voices that urge you to go here and do that, get things done, get this, you know, job done. But that's, that's not the reason why we're living. We study for, of course, self-improvement, self-development, but at the same time, if that study doesn't do any good, to the world that we're living in, to people that we are surrounded by. What good is it? So just keep on reflecting what you have learned, what you experience. I think that's incredibly important. And that's what part and that's what would really enrich your experience if you come to London. Because you will meet so many incredible people with incredible cultural and diverse backgrounds. Um, for an example, so I one of my friend one of my friends her father is Indian, but her mother is from Yugoslavia. So she has learned how to speak Hindi and a bit of Russian at home, but she grew up in the UK. So obviously she speaks uh, English. And then she ended up um, doing her undergrad in the, in the US. And now she's back in, back in the UK uh, doing her master's. So. When you meet people like this, you get to learn so much uh, from one person's experience. And, and I realized that, we, that you not only learn from just being in school and from professors and academic materials, but also by through social relationships. That's why I said the fourth category of social is also very important when you plan uh, your one-year program here at LSE because this city um, has so much to offer and the school also has so many diverse, incredible students uh, with different backgrounds and um, you will get to know incredible people. What, so what I want to say in this video is that, um, yes, so these are some of the tips that would really enrich your experiences while you study at LSE if you think about these four pillars of your life because obviously you are paying lots of money to come here. You're making a sacrifice to be away from your family, to experience something greater uh, for your own development. But at the same time, what I want to emphasize is that we can only plan, but planning doesn't make things perfect. I personally don't think that my year has been perfect at all. And even if I wanted it to be perfect, it can never be perfect because there because I believe that there is no such thing as perfection. You know, even if we want to make everything perfect, right? It, uh, we can only try. We can, we can, we can give our best, but that doesn't guarantee that things are going to be perfect. There will be, you know, flaws that you didn't expect. It's okay because that's part of the learning process. And for me as well, this year is still an ongoing process. I see so many messages. So say me, what are you going to do after you get done with your master's studies program? To be honest, till to this day, I have no idea. I mean, I there are things that I am very interested in checking out, um, learning and talking to people, but you know what? I just right now, look at this. Um, I have all these papers to, to do, read and write. I just now because what I'm focusing on is what isn't given to me today because that's all I'm going to do. That's my plan. 
so last but not least just get inspired go outside this uh there are so many amazing parks and london offers so many beautiful parks from saint james to regent's park kensington park hyde park green park buckingham palace garden primrose hill holland park southern park battersea park burgess park i mean the list goes on and on and also there's so many wonderful museums like victoria and the albert museum the national gallery natural history museum the british museum you name it. And of course, the city center, Mayfair, Soho, City of London, Westminster, where various eateries are available. So many cultural events are taking place. And of course, uh, this year is an exception because of the coronavirus. But, you know, you will get to you will get to take advantage of all these things. So I want you to make the most out of what you have, what you will get. And um, the bottom line is we can plan and planning is good on but do not rely on those plans being perfect they don't have to be perfect and they are never going to be perfect and it's okay that's part of the beauty of life you will learn along your journey i think that's it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed um sort of my spiel and my surviving tips i'll see you guys in the next video bye